Have you ever wondered why some websites loads instantly, while others shows a blank screen for a few seconds before anything shows up? Or why your marketing page still working without JavaScript enabled, but your React dashboard needs the whole app running just to run the, a couple of charts? That's not magic, it's rendering strategy. And understanding it is a superpower for front-end developers. In this episode of Front End System Design Essentials, we are going to talk about rendering strategies. Things like client side rendering, server side rendering, static side generation, island architecture, and a newer one, React Server Components. Those might sound a little bit abstract at first, but they have a huge impact on how fast your application loads, how easy it is to scale, and how good the user experience feels. Whether you are working with React, Ruby on Rails, or Node.js, Java, the principles are the same. By the end of this video, you will have a clear mental model and you will know when to use each technique. Quick favor before we dive in, I'm working on a brand new course called Front End System Design Essentials. But here's the thing, it's still in the planning stage and I want to make sure it's truly useful for you. So I have put together a quick survey to understand what you want to learn, how you want to learn, and the challenge you have been faced before. Your answer will help me ship the course uh, so it's not just another tutorial, but something engaging, practical, and valuable for you and for other front-end developers who want to level up. It only takes a couple of minutes. You will find the link right here and in the description below. Thank you so much for helping me make this course the best way it can be. I really appreciate it. So, what are these techniques? Let's start with a quick overview of the key rendering strategy we use on the front end. First, client-side rendering or CSR. This is what you get by default with frameworks like React or Vue uh, when there is no server-side rendering involved. When the user visits the website, uh, the browser loads a basic HTML shell, usually just a empty div with ID uh, equals to root or container. Then the JavaScript kicks in, fetch the data, building the DOM element, and rendering the UI inside that root element. Until that process finishes, the user sees nothing. So CSR is simple and powerful, but it delays this initial paint. It also hurts SEO unless you put extra work. Still, it's widely used, especially in single-page applications like Trello, Twitter, or Notion, where everything is dynamically and driven by client-side logic. So Trello, for example, is a pure front-end rendering application. So I'm using a plugin called Toggle JavaScript. Uh, it can disable the JavaScript temporarily for this particular site. So for example, if I have a Trello board opened, and if I disable the JavaScript, and you will see the page doesn't render anymore. It's just saying, uh, to use Trello, please enable JavaScript. That's a fallback. Uh, basically, it will detect if your JavaScript is supported in, on your client. If it doesn't enable, not doing any rendering at all. Because automatic data fetching, rendering to DOM elements, uh, all happens in the front end. So if you don't have JavaScript, you cannot render the app at all. Uh, another example is uh, in um, Notion. So I have a board view. It has everything as my backlog here. So if I disable JavaScript for this site, it will redirect me to another HTML, static HTML, uh, Notional SO disable JavaScript HTML. And you can see that JavaScript must be enabled in order to use Ocean. Please enable JavaScript to continue. And again, that means everything happened in front end. If I don't have JavaScript, it cannot do the uh, rendering at all. Next, we have server-side rendering or ISSR. With server-side rendering, the server generates the HTML on every request, including the actual content for the page. So when the browser loads it, the user immediately sees the full page. Then React hydrates the page, meaning it adding interactivity by attaching event handlers. You can think of ISSR like uh, handling someone uh, ready-made sandwich, not just the ingredients and the recipes. It's great for SEO and perceived performance. So for example, Confluence pages often use SSR. 
the count loads immediately, and the interactive part active once JavaScript finishes. So Confluence Pages has uh, the four SSR supported. If I disable the JavaScript and the do a refresh um, to get the data, I can still see the four page. It has everything. It has sidebars, menus, uh, the top bar, the page content, the chart, um, this content is purely generated at the request time. So when I send the request um, on my name, it will correct this page dynamically at the server side and then send me all the HTML content. And if I save this page to my local, and then I open up this HTML, and it's basically a full HTML document, has a header, uh, this script and so on. And if I search for my name, uh, you can see that I have this user name on the page. And I can see my name as well as all the page content in the document. That means uh, the document can only be generated at the runtime at the request on the server side. Now let's talk about static site generation or SSG. Instead of generating HTML, on each request, SSG does it ahead of time, usually at build time. You end up with a folder full of flat uh, HTML pages um, ready to be served instantly from a CDN or a HTTP server normally. It's fast, reliable, and ideal for pages that don't change often, like a blog post, document, or marketing sites. My old website, icoded.com.au, works this way. And also many blogs like Martin Follow's uh, blog is another good example. It uses uh, Ruby to build a um, static HTML pages uh, with images and, and everything. The page has already been built into a full version at the build time. So if I disable uh, JavaScript for this site, you can see it has every element already. I can see uh, the code snippets, the images, and read the articles without any problem. The only thing that doesn't work is the table of content, which is rely on the JavaScript. But the point here is that the page is generated at the build time. So everyone who looking at the martinfollow.com for this particular article will see exactly the same content. It doesn't change as it doesn't have any user specific data like the avatar or who is reading it. Another example is my own uh, homepage. This application is built with Next.js, but it has uh, the static site generation enabled. So basically, I can still navigate. I can look at the uh, tutorials, um, things for the links still working perfectly, and I can see the uh, you know the um, content, the code snippet, the CSS, HTML, and all this content is generated. Uh, ahead of time. Then there is the island architecture, a more modern and a modular approach. Uh, here the entire page is rendered as a static HTML, but only certain parts, the islands, um, are hydrant with JavaScript. Those islands might be uh, comment box or drop down or leave search uh, field. Everything else stays uh, static and lightweight. Take Jira for example, if you disable JavaScript, you will still see the sidebar, the header, they are server-side rendered, but the main content, like the issue list, the board view, the backlog, the roadmap, this may not load at all because it relies on JavaScript to fetch and run the data. This pattern helps reduce JavaScript bundle size, improve performance, and make pages more resilient. And in some cases, we cannot generate the full content in the backend. We can only dump partial SSR. And Jira is a very uh, different example here. It has part of the page generated per request dynamically in the backend. For other part, it's uh, rely on the client side rendering. So if we disable JavaScript on this page and do a refresh, you can see that I still can see my user specific data like uh, the recent project. It's only for me because it's dynamically generated only for me on the server side, I can see the recent project list. And also I can see the applications I'm using on the sidebar, also the user avatar. These things are generated uh, per request uh, in the backend. But also you can see there is a loading skeleton here. 
is part of the SSR response. Uh, if I have the JavaScript enabled, the once I have the initial page loaded as a SSR result, at some point there is a JavaScript kickoff, uh, a front end rendering, like re rendering. It will replace this area with the actual result uh, that happens in the front end. You can imagine that in this particular area, there will be a JavaScript uh, to replace this whole skeleton with the actual result that rendered by React. So this is a mixed structure and sometimes called uh, island architecture. You can have this island that only been rendered in um, front end and the rest of the pages can be generated dynamically in the back end. And finally, we have React Server Component or RIC. This is the new pattern and it's already supported in Next.js uh, app rotor. Uh, but it's obviously re restricted on React. With that, you can some component can be rendered only on the server and send the HTML uh, and the zero JavaScript on the client side for that part. So you can build a component that never hydrant since like a product descriptions or read only tables. This saves on bundle size and lets you prioritize interactivity where it matters the most. So React server components uh, pair really well with streaming uh, server-side rendering, give you more control over what runs at where. Why not just uh, use client-side rendering for everything? You can, but it comes with trade-offs. When you rely only on client-side rendering, your initial HTML is empty. User wait for JavaScript to load uh, and run before sending anything useful. On slow networks, uh, they can be seconds of nothing. On some low-end devices, the UI can feel laggy. And for SEO, it's a problem. Search engine need real content in the HTML. Even some search engine can, you know, execute the JavaScript, but it's still a uh, problem in most cases. In contrast, SSR gives you a uh, fast time to first byte and better SEO. SSG give you instant page loads with no server work uh, needed. Uh, island architecture give you uh, fine grand control, only hydrate what needs interactivity and keeps the rest uh, static. And the React server component lets you skip hydration entirely for part of the UI. Ultimately, it's not about which one is the best. It's about choosing the right technique or rendering strategy for the right job. When to use what? Let's get practical. How do you decide which strategy to use? Here's a quick breakdown. If your content doesn't change often, go to SSG or static site generation. It's fast and cheap. If your page depends on user-specific data, use SSR or a hybrid approach. If you are building a large application or dashboard or want to optimize uh, performance, Island architecture helps reduce the JavaScript footprint. If you care about showing something fast even before all the data is ready, consider streaming uh, server-side rendering or SSR. And if part of the UI don't need interactivity at all, React server components let you skip hydration entirely. You can even mix them. Many modern applications do exactly that. Rendering isn't just about where the HTML comes from. It's about how you ship your user experience. SSR helps you deliver dynamic pages with great uh, ICO. While well, static site generation gives you unbeatable speed for static content. Island architecture lets you hydrate just uh, the interactive parts and the regular server component that you render part of the UI on the server only. So you don't have to send the JavaScript to the browser for components that you don't need interactivity. This means smaller bundles and faster page loads. As front-end developers, we're not just building components, we're designing the system. Systems that load fast, scale well, and deliver a great user experience. If you found this helpful, check out my other videos on front-end system design essentials series, as well as the data fetching patterns and the real-time updates. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.